Hey, it's Paul Browning from HowToNetwork.com and 101labs.net, come to think of it. I wanted to cover some must-know Cisco CCNA iOS commands. These are commands you'll need to know for the exam, in my humble opinion. I can't tell you what's in it, although I took the exam, but obviously I'm not allowed to mention what you'll be tested on. But just bear in mind that this is going to help you get through the exam. I also wanted to cover what you'll need to know for technical interviews if you're going for CCNA level jobs. There's just a few things I wanted to mention. Um, I haven't included every command, so I have put out a few surveys and polls and people have said, remember this, remember that. Well, I don't always agree with every command they suggest because I just think it's going into too much detail for the CCNA. And there could be, there's thousands of commands available, so I might not have included every one. Uh, so I said that, um, please check all the available switches. So a switch is if you type show space question mark, you'll have a command like um, show um, start, start up. There could be another command available after that. So every time you type a command, you can hit a question mark. And um, if there's more commands available, subcommands or switches, then you can keep typing. So um, do um, do that. We'll cover some of it, some of it. Cisco Packet Tracer. Right. This isn't enough for the CCNA exam, and um, I can say that because this is my video. If I say it on a forum, a lot of people go bananas. But just bear in mind, I work for Cisco, and I've been teaching Cisco um, certifications since around 2004 so i'm rubbish at almost everything but i know this really well if you just try and use cisco packet tracer you might find yourself falling short especially when it comes to show commands and some of the protocols for example um vrrp glbp things like that which are covered in the syllabus so that's my opinion and since you're watching um i guess you want to hear what i've got to say so there it is Please configure these for yourself. Don't just watch a video of me configuring stuff. That's not enough for you to remember. You need to watch, you need to listen, and you need to do. Um, so kinesthetic, um, visual, and um, auditory. These are the three different ways you can learn things. Watching, doing, and seeing. Right, I'm using a live Cisco router. We've got a live Cisco racks on howtonetwork.com, which I'll show you in a minute. So I recommend you get some time. You can get a, a router off eBay for like twenty, thirty dollars, and um, a U switch like a twenty nine sixty is probably enough for CCNA. Get the cables to put them together. Put two or three routers, two or three switches, and then when you're finished, you can either add to it for CCMP or sell it. So I'm going to uh, just show you the live racks because I think they're important. All right, so I've gone to howtonetwork.com. Obviously, this is my website. You do what you want, by the way, when you're studying. You don't have to use my stuff. There's plenty of other um, providers out there, but you need to find one that's using live racks or by your own. So if you go to racks, you've got two options. There's a virtual uh, solution here where you, you need to have your own iOS system, and then you load um, this virtual machine. I don't support it, I just had it written for people like you who want to study. If you want to jump onto live Cisco equipment, we've got CCNA and CCMP level racks. There's a tour video. These are the racks that are held in a data center in America. There's two with a thing, one, two, three, four routers and four switches, and then four routers, four switches. And this is the topology. All right, so uh, there's a link on the video if you want to um, be a member of the course otherwise we're going to jump onto the router now and we're going to start with the commands so it's pretty easy to connect i did a ssh connection to the ip address of our live racks we've got a uh, rack one and rack two and i've used a timetable session um, timetable program to uh, book a session on rack one so So it tells you, um, you know, rack one is an application, um, DLS one and ALS one, distribution layer and access layer switches. I'm just connecting to rack one R1. So all I do is type connect RK1 R1. I'll press enter. 
and I'm on using a, a console. There's a console cable on the rack to the equipment. Just try and get this window. So this is what you'll normally see on a router when you uh, boot it up. Um, do you want to enter initial configuration mode? This isn't part of the iOS lesson, by the way, but if you ever see that, um, you always want to type no because it goes into some hellish setup uh, system where you have to keep typing yes or no and IP addresses and then it auto configures the router for you. It's no good as a CCNA and it doesn't, it doesn't work anyway. So type no and then the router will begin to um, boot. Look for any configurations that may be on there and so on. There shouldn't be any. So this is the kind of output you'll see if you boot in a live uh, router. All right, so first things first, hopefully this window does resize. It keeps changing. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is if you if you Google for Cisco iOS commands, it looks like Cisco have actually put one of their old books in PDF format on the uh, internet so you can download. So Cisco have got loads of documentation, but if I click on um, this one, you can see it says PDF. It's just worth you maybe having a look at the book when it downloads. I guess it's a book you could have bought in um, hardback format. So it's a few years out of a date, but it basically covers setting up the command line on the Cisco router. And you can see the fundamental commands. So all of the A's, then it goes B's. And um, some of these are out of date. You can't use them anymore, like write mem. Or may, you may be able to use it, but it's not a, a, a recognized command. So if you click on a clock, for example, it says um, the clock command and how you can configure it and then the syntax of what each command does. The command history, so when the command was introduced and then it's integrated into some sort of main release of Cisco iOS. Um, clock command supports the following configurations and then usually they will have a Cisco router output and they'll have some examples of the command. I don't um, recommend you read the entire PDF, but there's some useful information there. So you think, oh, what does that command do? Or what are the switches? Or um, what does it do, what it does? That kind of thing. So you clock in, initialize NVRAMs, too much information for the CCNA. All right, so I'll hop back onto my um, router here. So this is user exec mode. I'll put a question mark. You've got some commands you can actually type in in this mode. And um, it's worth just knowing you've got there is a difference. There's a, a limited amount. Some um, you can issue some show commands and you can do a ping, that kind of thing. But normally to get into privilege mode, you type enable and you'll have more commands available. But the router will be protected with a password. So to get from uh, here to there, it's enable. On Cisco devices, you can type the shortened version of the command. So if there's only one command that starts with the letters E and N, so E and N, there's no other command here that starts with those two letters. The router is going to know that you want to go into enable mode. All right, so I'm, like I said, I'm not covering every command available. I'm going to cover just a, um, a selection of ones that I think are important. So the first one is show version. Now I've typed VER, I'll hit the tab key, the router will finish it for me. If I go back to show V, now if there's more than one command that starts with V, the tab won't work. So if I go V and then question mark, you can see there's um, about 11 or so commands, 11 or 12 commands here that start with the letter V. So this is no good because I could be looking for show VLANs, show VRRP, show VTP. But if I go show VE, you can see this is the only command that's got those letters um, 
in the name. So I could type show VE and either press tab or just show VE, press enter and I get an output. So this is the first actual command I wanted to talk about. Show version is very important. The, uh, if we go through it, basically this is saying it's Cisco iOS software, which we know is the 1841 version of software. This is the code that's loaded onto the uh, router. It's the advanced enterprise. Uh, K9 refers to security. So what you can do is go into the Cisco documentation. I won't cover it here and you can find out what all these mean. You don't need to know it for the CCNA, so don't worry. The other thing is it's showing you that it's version 15.1 and then there's a, another a release down the train. There's a, um, as you would imagine, there's a designated train for Cisco iOS releases as they add features and updates and bug fixes. You don't need to know about that either. I just wanted to show you what it, um, what it means. So um, there's read only memory here with the bootstrap on. This is important, the router uptime. So sometimes you'll troubleshoot for a customer yourself and the uptime will be something like four or five years. Well, things can happen over that period of time and sometimes the device needs to be reloaded. It clears out uh, buffers and um, uh, clears the counters and that kind of thing. And sometimes um, with the best will in the world, even Cisco routers can become a bit stuck. So if it's convenient and if the configurations are all saved, then you can reload the device. You can see what happened. Now this is in the CCNA. I've seen it in the exam. You want to find out what happened, like um, was there a crash or um, some other issue? And uh, this was issued, uh, somebody issued the reload command, which is basically reboot the device. So it was done manually. And this is when it happened. Now, obviously, if the clock on the router is correct, then this is fine. This will tell you when it was done. So say you want to know who was on duty at a certain time and the clock is correct, then you will know who the more, more than likely issued the reboot command. This is the name of the actual image that's on the flash memory. So flash colon, there's no spaces. And this is the typical naming convention of Cisco uh, iOS software. So there's a warning here, like a legal um, notification. Then we see this, it says more, dash, dash, more, dash, dash. So that means the screen has filled up with information and we need to press the space bar in order to get to the next piece of information. This will also happen when you issue a, like a show command and there's too much for one page. Excuse me, I'll have a sip of my coffee. So I'll press the space bar now and it scrolls up and we get some more information. If you require more assistance, uh, email Cisco. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never emailed them. So, all right. So we again see the model of router. So this is giving you important information because your customer may ask them. Um, they want to configure some advanced OSPF, BGP. Well, you can go to the Cisco sales websites and see if this model of router will support. But also, this is quite a low level model. I'm not saying it won't support BGP, by the way, but I'm just saying if you're looking to build a large infrastructure, and this model is out of date, by the way, a large infrastructure with this at the core and another 50 or 60 routers, then it's going to be a bad idea. Process a board you don't really need to worry about. It's got two fast Ethernet interfaces. Important to know if you're uh, going to use it for an office. Two serial interfaces, interfaces, a VPN module. There's a DRAM. We don't need to worry about that really. So NVRAM, um, we need to know about that. If you read your uh, study guides, you need to know what's in um, the NVRAM, what the DRAM does. I'm not going to cover that here. And um, USB flash. And there we've got some compact flash. There's um, some more information. It goes to the more again. So we can press the space bar. And it looks like we've got to the end. So this is the license information for the software. Cisco made things a bit more difficult because people were passing around the iOS. 
And then this is very important, configuration register, 0x2142. So you need to know only two for the CCNA, 0x2102, what does that do? And what does 2142? And you also need to know it for the real world if there's a problem with the someone forgetting the password. Because <laughs> if you don't know the password to get into enable mode um, to configure the router, then you're stuck, especially if the configuration's wrong. This is telling the router to, when you reboot, don't look for any configuration files. Just boot up and um, just load as normal as if you'd come out of the box. Okay, so that's the, um, the first command to cover. So if I do a, I'll do a show start for next. So show start isn't the actual command. And you need to know if I press tab now, it's startup dash config. And these are the silly questions you'll get asked in the exam, but you need to know it will say show start, show startup config with a space, show startup dash config. And you're going to think, I don't know, I can't remember which one. So this is why you need to go into the uh, devices and um, configure them. Um, Packet Tracer will help a lot, but still not as good as the, the real stuff. So this is the configuration that if it was 2102, the, rout the router would load. We've got a host name. So this um, this would add the host name to the router, and you can um, you've seen so far it doesn't it doesn't have a name. It's just called router. I'll press the space bar every time. Okay, someone's added IP addresses just to here. I keep pressing space bar. This I think is, um, no, somebody's put a configuration on here. I was gonna say it's default, but it's not. So somebody's put a IP address for the SNMP server. And they've configured, it looks like um, one of the labs from my books maybe. All right, so this is the start of config. So if I change the configuration register, um, Conf T So you can see there's two commands config dash register and I'll put some question mark. I don't want to change it. So you've got all of these hexadecimal values and I would put um zero X twenty one zero two I press enter and then reload the router. I don't want to do that because I don't want that other person's configuration on. So there's one thing I could do now. To get out of config mode, I can type exit or I can hold down the control and the Z key and I've dropped um, I've dropped back into a uh, router mode. All right, so say you don't want that configuration on the in the startup in case it reloads you can actually erase the startup or what i can do is let me go comp t and configure t's configure terminal i'll put host name um i'll just put paul for now sorry i've got a big cable in the way of my keys for the microphone host name paul all right, so I'll type exit. So I'm going to do a couple of things now. I'm going to go show run. And I'll, pre I'll press tab, show running dash config. There should be nothing on this apart from a host name, which is Paul. If I press the space bar, there's no IP addresses. There's no, nothing for SNMP. But you've seen the startup config that's held in nvram so what i'm going to do is copy run and I'm gonna, you're going to use the tab key so you can see it all copy running config where am i going to copy this configuration to it's going to be startup dash config for short i could type copy run hit the space bar then start so this is going to help me now if we reload the router and it loads a configuration 
So now it's saying, I pressed enter and it's saying, do you want the destination file to be start at config? Well, it has to be because this is the file that the router looks for when it reboots. If I named it startup dash happy, nothing would happen because um, it doesn't look for that file when it reboots. I could save it and then later on I could rename it or use that file for something else if I wanted it, for example, as a backup. So I'm going to press enter. It's adding it to the NVRAM now. It's taken the um, name that I changed earlier. So if I go show start now, there'll be no configuration apart from the host name Paul because I haven't done anything on this router. So we did the show version and then um, the show startup. Uh, we've done a um, copy run start. Now if I wanted, if I'd um, rebooted the router and uh, I won't do password recovery here. If I'd rebooted because I'd forgotten the password into 2142, I could then issue the um, copy start run. Sorry, this cable's in the way. Copy start run, and it would copy the running configuration into uh, the startup into the running. I could then change the passwords or just turn off the passwords. Oh, excuse me, I had to take my sweatshirt off. It's got a bit hot now. Next command I wanted to cover is DIR flash. So, now, in the um, in the CCNA, they've actually seemed to, for now, have removed the um, router emulator. So you may or may not have labs. It just depends. So just be careful and don't get caught out if they start adding them. But you'll need to do labs anyway to answer the questions. So say you're stuck and you, you know some of the command, um, but not the rest. I'll do DIR, which is like a Unix command for a directory of something, but I'm not sure. So I did DIR space question mark. I don't know if I need a slash, a space, a colon. So these are all the things I can list of um, the files or directories. I want to see what... I could do the NVRAM, but I'm going to do flash. So this is the iOS, which we saw earlier in the show version, but I want to drill into it. So DIR space flash, and then we need to put this colon here. I'll press enter. So this is telling me all the files that are in the um, flash memory. Uh, the read write, if you recognize that from anywhere, the size, the date it was added and the time, and the name of the actual file. So this is my I iOS. This is a um, secure HTML file. I'm not sure what that is. Home.tar, I'm not sure what that is. I think these may be um, uh, default files that are created by the iOS. I'm not sure. Um, I don't think you need to know any of that stuff. VLAN DAT is the um, database for your VLANs. I'm not sure what it's doing on the router actually, but um, it's there anyway. Uh, we'll cover that maybe when we do another video on the kind of layer two stuff you need to know. Um, copy TFTP flash. So this is another one for the exam. I'm not saying you'll be using TFTP now because it's um, insecure, but so say you've uh, got a file, it could be iOS or a running config or a backup of your config, which you should have. So I'll do copy space question mark. So this is copying from somewhere to somewhere. So I'm going to copy from, I could copy from a flash. It could be an FTP server, all of these things here. I'm choosing TFTP just for an example. You could also store files onto your flash. So copy from TFTP, and I'll hit this um, the question mark. Where am I copying it to? Well, I'll probably be copying it to uh, either my flash, and my running config, my startup config. So say I've been doing some configurations and I've made a big mistake, but I know I've kept a backup of my um, startup config on the... A TFTP server which will be on your you should have it on your local network on your VLAN so I'll go from copy TFTP 
and then um, I'll do flash. I'll hit the carriage return. Now this is asking me for the IP address of my TFTP server, so I'll go 192.168.1.1. This isn't connected to anything by the way. Then I'll press enter. Then I'll need to type in the file name of the flash, so it would be startup-config. I'll just make up a name because um, I've got nothing configured on this network. The destination file name, what, what's it going to be called when it arrives? I'll just I'll just press enter. Now. As I said, nothing's connected here, but um, it's still important that you know these commands and how they work because the chances are when you come to configure them, you're in a bit of a network emergency. I did this all day at Cisco, so it was it was easy for me because that's what I did. All right, show memory. If I look on here as well, actually, yeah, just for your information, the show memory command is uh, a way down, but it's there. Uh, display statistics about memory when Cisco iOS modularity images are running. So you can use it in exact or privileged exact mode. Show memory, memory type, etc. And it obviously gives you the information. So if I just go, I always do this, show, show memory, I'm going to hit the space and question mark. And this is and going to give me the available um, commands. So the statistics, the summary of the memory usage. Uh, there's some output modi output modifiers, which I'll cover in another video. You could be asked um, about um, this command when you're logging a case with Cisco TAC. So I'll just do summary. And it's giving me a summary of the memory in use on the uh, router. So you, you would use this if there's processing pack, um, problems for packets. Uh, I've kind of seen enough now, so I'll just hit Control and Z just to finish that. There could be pages and pages. Uh, show users. I don't want to get into too many of these show commands, actually. So later on, I might put these over into the um, troubleshooting section. Show users shows you who's connected to this uh, device. So, for example, somebody's telneted across the network into this device and um, you want to kick them off or uh, see if there's any particular problems. So this is one I do want to cover. It's called Show Diag. You would um, maybe not ask this in the CCNA, but maybe if you're troubleshooting problems with Cisco. Show Oh, I might not have it on here actually. Oh, we do. That's interesting. I think this might be a hidden hidden command. So if you type question mark, you won't it won't show, but it's in there anyway. And it's handy you know you know about hidden commands in case Cisco or one of your customers asks you. So this is showing you the hardware information on this device. It's showing you what's in slot zero. And it's showing you the port adapters, the MAC addresses, the hardware numbers, that kind of stuff. So you would copy this and send it to Cisco TAC. So it's showing you all of the um, hardware. Um, there's a wide area network card. It's a serial T1 card. It's called a WIC 1T. And there's a part number as well if you want to uh, order a part from Cisco. All really handy to know. And then um, in slot 1 there's a uh, the same thing. So that's the show diag. It won't work on Packet Tracer. Show processes. This is another memory related command. So this is the memory use on the um, device for the CPU. And if you're having um, problems with memory stalling or, or being full, you can see how much of the memory uh, percentage is being used um, for real time one minute ago and five minutes ago and we've only used one percent. But if you're running OSPF and other things then you're going to see high memory usage. You can see what's using it and this is going to help you troubleshoot the re uh, router. I'm going to hit Control and Z again. Show interface is really handy, uh, especially for your troubleshooting. So I'll go 
show show interfaces I'll press enter this is going to show me everything um, about the interfaces including fast Ethernet and um, my one my one interfaces so this is the name of the interface it's administratively down that means the network administrator hasn't issued the no shut command line protocol is down is layer 2 it's not seeing any layer 2 information this is your hardware address generally you only need to know that when you're doing IPv6 and trying to work out um, the auto address where it adds FF, um, FE in here maximum trans transmission unit uh, the bandwidth of the interface the encapsulation type is important the keep alive this is running auto duplex auto speed we'll come to this again when we do some layer 2 stuff I'm not sure what else is important from here this is showing you all the traffic if you're having CRC errors and um, this is for your troubleshooting which we'll cover later and um, the same for your other fast ethernet interface this is for your serial interface you can have different outputs here because this is uh, on a one connection so you're not going to have your um, full or half duplex and that kind of thing so I'm going to issue that command again show interfaces hit the question mark and you can see some of the um, options you have if I just wanted to see the fast ethernet just the serial um, ethernet and so on summary and um, switch port will cover for layer two if you want to look at your trunk interfaces this is probably the most used command for you as a um, CCNA level engineer um, so I'll go show IP int brief now I could actually do show IPv6 interface brief if I want to look at my IPv6 interfaces. So if I just expand this, it doesn't work. I don't know why. Sorry, I need to look into that. So I'll issue that again. This is really important. So my fast Ethernet interface is going to tell me my IP address. Well, I don't have one. OK. The method could be um, unset, you can manually set it, or DHCP. It's administratively down is the first thing I need to know, and this actually says protocol, um, and it's down as well, so there's no layer 2 information. So if I go um, conf t, for short interface, f0 slash 1, IP address DHCP, now this might not work unless I actually get an, um, an IP address allocated and I could go no shut which is short for no shutdown. Now th uh, oh, this is connected to something actually but um, I don't think the other side's got any uh, IP address so for type end now I'm going to hit the up arrow a couple of times to show me my um, last commands it scrolls through the commands show IP interface brief all right so you can see this is the IP address method now is DHCP It's waiting for a DHCP server which I don't have one connected it's up administratively up so I've issued the no shut command the protocol is down because there's nothing on the other side so I could hop onto the other side and then make some configurations and it should come up all right um, host name we've already covered actually um, config register I covered I don't want to do too many show commands but show clock check your Cisco CCNA study guide for what the your options are for the clock I manual or um, NTP this is showing me the uh, time for the um, clock inside. All your devices, if you're running on a network and don't have network time protocol, should all manu should all agree on the same time, uh, especially for troubleshooting. I think there's actually another command. Is it source? Show clock. All right, detail. I'm not really interested in at the moment. 
Uh, boot system is the next command. So, what are my options when I... All right, boot system space question mark. All right, so generally speaking, your router will boot and it will look in the flash file for the iOS. What you could say is I want you to boot from a TFTP server. Say you've got a really big iOS that doesn't fit on this um, router and you want to do um, load it from somewhere else or some other file. You could boot from a FTP server also. That could be a bad example, actually, because if it doesn't fit, it's not going to um, boot it, but you know what I mean. So um, you're booting from somewhere else, and you would do this for an emergency if you wanted to boot over the network. And again, check the um, Cisco notes for all of this if you want more information. Um, so boot system description. This is for your admin. So, uh, so if I go interface... Um, what was it? Serial, zero slash zero slash zero. So, say you've got someone else taking over from you, or you just want to do it for admin, you want to help them understand what goes where. Well, description is adding some information. So, 2HQ router. So this is going to the headquarters router. And then I'll type end. And then um, show interface um, S. Zero slash zero slash zero. So say this person's doing some troubleshooting and is stuck. They're like, oh, what? I don't know what this does. I've got no documentations. Ah, this is going to the headquarters router. So it's just giving them some more information and it's handy. If you're doing admin, you could be saying to attach later or to whatever you want. Exit, logout, control Z. We've kind of um, covered that. I've just gone into the um, Cisco documentation. So logout, you can close an active terminal session by logging off the router. So say you're in config mode, you could type exit. You can type um, disable here and then the logout um, command. It's used to log off or exit from an active session. I don't really use it to be honest, but it could be one of those exam questions where it says what happens if you type logout and if you've never heard of the command, then um, again, you're going to be in trouble. Shutdown, no shutdown. So my serial interface, I'm not sure what it's connected to actually. Live Cisco racks. So I'm on router. I think I can click on that actually. Oh, here we go. So I'm on router one. The fast ethernet is going to this um, access layer switch, ALS one. So I know if I want to do, do some configurations, I can figure um, fast ethernet zero, zero to um, zero one on this switch here. My serial interface is connected to the serial 000 on R2. So if there's a problem and I'm, I'm trying to troubleshoot or I've done a configuration, I'll go um, conf t interface s0 slash 0 slash 0, press enter and I can issue a um, no shut for short. Or if I want to bring it down, I'll just issue the shut command. That will bring it down. 